Sean Stone started by asking Clark about what's next for the mobilization for climate change. Let's take a listen. I'm not officially a part of Veterans Stand for Standing Rock. I have no formal title with it, and, and frankly, Michael Wood asked me to leave uh, by the end of it because he wasn't, you know, he was a kind of against the apology ceremony, even though I told him about it repeatedly uh, in the weeks leading up to it. And the tribe and, and Leonard Crow Dog had asked me to write a letter allowing Leonard Peltier to have a spiritual advisor visit him in prison, if not be released by President Obama. And he was like, you can't do that. That's not part of us. We didn't sign up for that. Just water protectors, that's it. So you got to go somewhere else to do that stuff. And so, you know, I don't really care about money or power at all. I care about truth. I care about doing the right thing. So I was like, all right, no worries. Good luck. I mean, I'll help him with anything he does. I think his, his heart's in the right place, and he's willing to go out there and risk his freedom and, and his health and safety. Um, but for me, this is more of a, a spiritual journey than it is necessarily a power trip or a money trip. So what's your intention now, going forth, based on what you've seen, to help mobilize public consciousness? Well, veterans stand has said they're going to go to Flint. So I'm going to support them when they go to Flint in any way I can. Um, but not to make too much out of it, but, you know, I'm on a mission from God, okay? And that mission is to save mankind. And nobody's going to stop that. Um, we are facing the extinction of our species. It's going to come much faster than people understand. You know, I, I said on the Young Turks last week, we have eight years. That, that doesn't mean we're all going to die in eight years. What it means is, in eight years, we're going to have a capital problem that is caused by climate change. So for instance, if you're 10 years into a mortgage on a house that's within about 40 feet of sea level, which is everybody in Florida, um, as well as the most expensive real estate on Earth, the last time that the atmosphere was this warm and we had this much carbon in it, the sea level was 25, 30 feet higher. That's already making its way right now into the reinsurance actuarial tables. By 2023, it's going to make it into the actual insurance tables. So if I tried to sell my house in Florida at that time, it's not going to be underwater. Nobody's going to buy it because no one's going to be able to insure it. So you're going to have essentially a, a capital bomb is going to go off in the American economy that will spread throughout uh, so that while we still may have time maybe to address climate change at that level, we won't have the capital to address it, um, whereas we do right now. And once we don't have the capital and once that occurs, that's going to occur simultaneously with the depletion of the Ogallala Aquifer that runs under the Midwest. So you're going to have a dust bowl in the Midwest again. You're going to be faced with the kind of choices uh, like, let's divert the Great Lakes to agriculture, you know, like the Soviets did uh, with the Caspian Sea and the Sea of Azov and others, which will further environmentally degrade the United States. You know, it's, it's a twofold problem. You're dealing with climate change as well as ecological overreach. And a lot of people don't realize how fragile our society is, how fragile our wealth is. Um, the dollar is not backed up by anything other than what people think it is worth in terms of petrochemicals and, you know, the petrodollar and everything else. So what will happen is you will have a water shortage in the United States in 2023 as well as a capital shortage in a country with over 300 million guns. And it doesn't take rocket science to figure this out. I can show you an overlay map of any place in the world that has water shortages and you're going to have political violence. And once you go down that route, it's like walking into a dark room and you don't know what's going to happen or what it's going to lead to. So people have to understand we've got eight years to really fix this. And if we don't by then, we're toast long term. What are some of the solutions that you would call upon Congress and private corporations to enact? Climate mobilization, pure and simple. 
Right now, our economy is tooled towards the waging of war. We spend 50% of our tax dollars on war, um, undeclared war, on most of the rest of the world. Other countries also spend all this money on it, so that the drivers in all of our economies are conflict, whereas we actually need to work together with other countries and other economies to, to apply this technology towards peace, to apply it towards, you know, <laughs> beating swords into plowshares and saving the planet, because every aspect of our economy has to be retooled. It's not just hydrocarbons. It's the agricultural system. I mean, the way we grow food in our country is we're, we're dumping poison into the ground and it's killing off the microbiomes, which are the microorganisms that live underneath the soil and in which when you do rotation agriculture, you're, you're putting the nitrogen and the carbon back into the soil. We can't do that anymore because we've killed the soil. You, you could suck up probably about a third of the carbon in the atmosphere by fixing the agricultural system. It's going to be about bringing the oceans back to life with kelp farming and other things. It's about finding other sources for everything from packaging to products so that instead of the cheap way of, hey, we put this straw on the ground and this black stuff comes out, it's, oh, we grow things and then we use those things we grow. You know, we, thinking back to when I was younger and you'd hear everyone say, yeah, man, there's like a conspiracy to, to make hemp and weed illegal in order to poison the earth. And at the time, I thought, oh, that's ridiculous. And you realize, no, it's true. It's true. We, we have actually most of the solutions at our fingertips to solve things. But what happens is oil is so woven into our systems by government and private industry and individuals who profit massively off it that you have to rework a lot of our systems. I mean, look at the most powerful group in any state in the United States, and, and we all know that state legislators are way cheaper to corrupt than federal ones, and you think, wow, the utility company has been there for a hundred years. They've had a hundred years to be the most powerful force in that state and corrupt everyone in the state. And that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a government that has largely been bought out, and they've been bought out for years. And the empty slogans and everything else are not going to save us. They actually need to do their jobs and protect the American people. But do you think the establishment can actually handle this shift? I mean, they talk about the Paris Accords. and Is that genuine? Or do you think it's just a way of maintaining the ultimate corporate power? It's absolutely power maintained to, to, to create a corporate power. I mean, look, a lot of people are worried about a Trump presidency. I've got my concerns about it. Um, but to think Hillary Clinton was somehow going to do climate mobilization or do anything at all to save us is wishful thinking. Um, she may have recognized global warming is real, but she's still a person who's like, you know, we're going to draw down our carbon emissions 50 percent by 2050. Well, guess what? The British government just two years ago published a report that said civilization was going to collapse in 2035 unless we did something, because it's about more than climate. It's about the effects of entire regions of the world that are collapsing. And those refugees are then pushed into other places where, because they're people trying to survive, and that starts to mess up those political economies. So once your political systems aren't functioning, um, it, it's a quick road downhill. But when you, when you look at it and you think, you know, the problem, it's not, it's not just like the quote unquote establishment. It's the gatekeepers for the establishment. Like when I look at the bigger problems in the world, you know, I've been lucky enough to meet quite a few incredibly wealthy people in the last few years. And most of them seem like decent folks on the surface, at least. It's the people that work for them who are the trouble. You know, it's, it's the guys who are the careerists and the professionals, because each careerist, like, let's say you're the CFO or the COO or the CEO of a company, and you're the fifth one in five years or six years, and you have to think of your resume, because you're not thinking of the company. You're not thinking of the people that work for the company. You're thinking of your resume and the shareholder's resume. And your resume is going to say, I cut costs by 10%. That's how I got so much more money from the stock. 
Well, that means those costs are generally, you cut people's pensions, you cut people's benefits, you cut people's pay, you, you cut their jobs out. So the entire economy is run by people who are screwing over everybody else for a bullet point on a resume for their next job or to get another 3,000 shares of stock you know, at their option. It's not towards the welfare of the people doing the work. It's a savage world. Do you think there's any hope from a state actor, whether it's China or Russia or America? It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, you, you see the Europeans were able to move to renewables fairly quickly. I mean, you've got Costa Rica, hardly a world superpower, is able to produce 100% of its energy through renewable sources. I mean, how sad is it? Costa Rica can do that, and we're not even close. And yet, we claim world leadership. But that world leadership is only based upon the value of the dollar and our war machine. Because all you have to do is get on a plane and go to a lot of different countries on Earth, and you know, you're going to get a wake-up call that the US is not as advanced as we think it is. We're falling behind a lot of the rest of the world, both in terms of education, infrastructure, basic human rights and medical services. And yet, we keep propagandizing ourselves that, hey, we're number one. Yeah, we're number one in debt. We're number one in, in the number of people we can kill each year. But we're not number one in the things that make our lives better. And that's what worries me. And I think our political systems will change if, if people demand accountability. It's hard because most of the press are, you know, there's no investigative reporting among major news networks anymore. Um, so their money goes towards highly paid people who sit in front of a camera and they live in the kind of what I consider the colonial capitals of America, you know, New York and D.C. And they don't get out much. They don't mix much with people of other financial backgrounds or anything else. And, and they don't really know what's going on in the country. And all you have to do is watch those three minutes between, you know, news segments to realize that the only people advertising are, hey, here's a bank and you'll get to retire soon and you'll be wealthy and drive a nice car like these people. And then the next commercial is, hi, we're your gas and energy companies and we're actually making the world safe. It couldn't be farther from the truth. And then the last commercial is always, having trouble getting an erection? Feeling crazy and anxious? Take these drugs. I, I, so you've got like the kind of three pillars of modern America right there telling you what they're all about. In between the news that the people they pay supposedly report on. Perfectly said. I mean. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> it, it's like, it's not, it's not you know, 1984, it's not George Orwell, it's more Aldous Huxley, it's more Brave New World, it's more people's heads are filled with so much nonsense, and they don't even recognize it. I mean, I worked briefly for an ad agency for about a year in New York uh, around the turn of the century, and I was their director of new business. So if, if you just, here's like some basic stuff is, look, advertising works. It improves the sale of your product by between 20 and 30 percent. So if I were selling sandwiches, literal sandwiches made out of it, I could sell 25 percent more if I advertised. Because what you're doing is you're using uh, psychiatry, psychology, you're using about 50 different sciences on human behavior to influence people's decision making process. So. You know, it's like Ogilvy with his, here's your seven magic marketing words, you know, new, improved, more, bigger. You know, it's, it's creating an artificial reality to influence people's minds. And if you think that the average American's been subjected to, what is it, two, three, four thousand messages a day, it comes in so fast they don't even comprehend it anymore. Um, if you go in to, to look at stuff like, like a company like Google, how does Google make its money? Entirely off advertising. So it's the wealthiest company in the world, and it's supported by advertising. So tell me, try and tell me advertising doesn't work. Because 
if you're spending so much money off it that you've created the wealthiest company in the world simply off advertising, it works. That's why people pay for it. Mind control works, and it's doable. <laughs> it's scary, but it's true. No, it's true, but, but you know, on the good side is people know the truth when they hear it. They just know. Because we all go through this. I mean, part of the reason Hillary Clinton lost was because people are building up a mental resistance to bull because they've been pumped full of it for so many years, you can just see the repetition of the bullshit over and over and over. I mean, you go back to a guy like, like Gil Scott Heron, like with the song B-Movie back in 1980, he could be describing today. It's been the same system and the same issues in the system going on 40 years now. And people are slowly starting to come awake for it. Uh, you know, just in time to, to save the human race.